Good morning. Good morning. That's much better. Uh, my name is Anil Menon. I'm um, a managing director and a member of the managing board at the World Economic Forum. And I want to welcome you all uh, to the uh, GFC annual meeting 2019. Now, this is exciting for me because for the last six years, I used to sit right there. Some of you recognize me. I used to be on the Global Council, a couple of you. Uh, co-chaired the uh, Cities and Urbanization Council for a couple of years. And uh, as of seven months, I am, I'm here on the other <laughs> side with the World Economic Forum. So I am excited to be on this panel, inviting you all uh, to join us for the day and a half uh, today and tomorrow, but also to welcome my former colleagues, current friends, current colleagues uh, on the panel here. Let me introduce uh, the, 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 the people we have on the panel, but I also, after that, want to spend a few minutes talking a little bit and expanding on the points that Borge made about the shift that we are making uh, at the World Economic Forum for our next 50 years. As many of you know, uh, next year is our 50th anniversary, and uh, we are shifting not only the strategy, but the perspective and the role and the need and the importance of the GFCs uh, become even uh, will change and become even more critical for our future. So with that, before I do that uh, and get to the slides, I want to introduce, so that you're not wondering who are these people sitting next to me, uh, I want to introduce first Christina Lamp Ornord, uh, who's a founder and chief executive officer of Cadenza Innovation in the US. She's been with the council, she's co-chaired a couple of the councils, we'll hear a little bit more, but what is striking is, I think you're the only I may be wrong, but you are the only two-time winner of the Tech Pioneer Award from the forum. Uh, so she has done it twice, and it's in the energy storage business, which is the Cadenza Innovation. Next to her is Penny Abiverdena, and uh, Penny is a commissioner for international affairs at the mayor's office uh, in the city of New York, and um, she is a YGL uh, in addition to her role in the communities. So thank you, Penny, for being here. And next to her is sang Yup Lee, who is a distinguished professor and dean of the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. I think you're the longest serving person on so. GFCs. I think so, from the first one. Yes, from 2000, for, I think for 11 years now. Something and on multiple, so you, you bring a range of thoughts and experiences on the GFC. And the last, but not the least, Lisa Witter, another YGL, co-founder and executive I'm an OGL. chairman. I'm retired, oh, old you? now. Not young anymore, like Penny. You, we never let you go. You're still a YGL. Maybe we'll drop the Y, but you're still a GL. GL. Okay. Um, co-founder and executive chairman, A Political Germany, based in Berlin. Um, thank you for joining us. What I thought I might do is, before we get into the discussion, put us all on the same uh, perspective and grounding, because we use the word platforms. I mean, even my dry cleaners have become a platform now. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it used to be solutions. You move from solutions to platform and paradigm to platform. So let's talk about what we mean by platform so we all use it in a very particular manner. So with that, I, I also want to pick up on a couple of things uh, as it relates to uh, where we are and where we've been for the last 50 years and what we're trying to do for the next 50. Now, what is striking is I was a former professor, a recovering academic, um, and I remember when I was my PhD programs reading about the history of organizational theory, and I remember the term stakeholder theory. I didn't make the connection then as to who, the coin, who coined the term, who was the one who wrote about it, who brought it to bear, which is Professor Klaus Schwab, uh, the chairman and founder of the World Economic Forum. In 1971, the focus of the World Economic Forum, when it was a European management forum, was about how do you make businesses relevant and effective. And at that time, the predominant idea was a Friedonian, or Friedman concept of the business of business is business. And Professor Schwab, in his book and in his thesis, and in 1971 with Davos, said, no, the business of business is about taking care of its stakeholders. 
which, is, which are all those circles that you see around there saying that you can only have permission to continue doing business if you take care of the communities that you're in, if you take care of the stakeholders that are involved in your enterprise and are impacted by your enterprise, whether it is society, whether it is civil society or public and, and other uh, sectors. Fast forward to 19, uh, 2019, it has changed. And what we are now talking about is a global citizenship approach, the global governance, where business is no longer at the center. It is not about the stakeholder to the business, but business itself is a stakeholder. If business, and you heard from Borge, if businesses don't step up and take a stakeholder leadership mindset, they may not have permission to do business. Similarly, if governments don't engage more closely with the business, you will not be able to solve the problems that are facing society and the governments. So it's about a collective future and collective work. And that's the whole idea of what we are trying to shift to and what you will hear us talk about not only in Davos but going forward. It is this notion that we share this together and arm's length approach is not going to do it. It has to be much more closely uh, connected and collaborative. You'll hear more about this idea over the next two, two days, and I, I assume you already started talking about it. I do want to bring up the 1973 Davos Manifesto, and for those of you who are not aware of it, you probably will find this online, but you should read this. Because what is striking about that is in 1973, for a document that is so relevant even today. And interestingly enough, it talks about the role of management is to serve society. It must assume the role of trustee of the material universe for future generations. In 1973, when this was done, one of the people invited to Davos was the Greta Thunberg of that generation, Jacques Cousteau. And who came up and said, we better take care of the environment and we better make sure that we own collectively the responsibility for the environment. So this is something of great pride to us at the, manage, uh, at the uh, World Economic Forum is that we have anticipated, notwithstanding that we have, still have challenges, but we are saying it's because of the collective input of all our members and all our participants that we were able to see beyond the corners and farther out into the future. And so the whole idea is how do you create knowledge about the future, but more importantly, how do you shape the future? You can't shape the future of energy or shape the future of healthcare or shape the future of cities or shape the future of manufacturing if you don't know where you came from and then where it ought to go, not where it is going to go. And that is our, this room, and our platform's role, which is understanding the future and shaping the future. And that's what we will be talking about here. But before I move on, I do want to talk about what is the biggest difference that we as GFCs, we either as co-chairs or as members, have to concentrate, have to focus on as we go forward. One is that with this platform approach, it is about bringing all networks, not just the networks that we work with, but the networks that you are engaged with that are not currently engaged with the World Economic Forum. The work that they do is relevant for us. The work that they do is important to us. How do you bring it on? And I want to talk to you all, uh, Penny, for example, as you have done it with New York, or Lisa, as you do internationally. This is a critical thing because we shift from a project management to a system leadership thinking, which is about dynamic approaches, interrelationship between the systems. And the last, before we get into the discussion, is say, how do we organize for all this? I know this is a, this is testing your eyes. <laughs> and how many of you are young and how many of you are older like me? But having said that, let me just speak to it because it is not that critical that you take every, and we will supply you these, uh, these slides. But the whole idea is that we have the regional focus, which are regional summits, where we talk about peace and reconciliation, we talk about global risks, but then we also have our platforms, the 18 platforms. And some of them are around the tech governance, the 4IR center here, the affiliate center here in Dubai and elsewhere. We focus on blockchain, we focus on data policy, we focus on IoT, robotics, and smart cities, and the connection on tech, and we also focus on, um, what's the last one I missed there? I know I missed something, this is a test of my eyes. Oh, there you go. And machine learning, I should, not, I should know that, that's my area. Uh, <laughs> artificial intelligence and machine learning. 
And then we have also on societal, environmental, and social changes, which is about inclusive societies, the work that Sadia and team does on the future work, or my colleague uh, Rick Sammons talks about investment and trade, and then we also talk about public goods, about the environment, climate change that Dominic Wauwery uh, leads. And the last is my area, which is what I oversee, which is all of industry platforms, which is the future of cities, future of manufacturing, future of energy, future of mobility, and future of healthcare. You will see the list there. So this is what we do. Now the question is, how do you make this effective? How do you make this work? And you are all GFC members. You are representing everybody here. We're going to be talking about best practices. So to kick this off, Penny, yes. I thought I would turn to you. Um, I'm the newest you, member. You are the newest member. We're going to make you work. Um, <laughs> you do this at scale for a, for a very small city called New York. <laughs> Um, and your role is to connect New York to all the other systems in the world yep. and all the countries and the networks. Can you tell us a little bit about how you think about platforms and how you think about the network of platforms connecting to the platform called New York City? Absolutely. Um, thank you so much. It is really an honor to be here. I get to represent um, the GFC on cities and urbanization. Um, I see them all sitting together, so hi. <laughs> um, so, you know, this was actually, this. I just had my fifth year as Commissioner for International Affairs, and when the mayor um, appointed me in 2014, he felt like there was a missed opportunity. Um, I run an agency that deals with the largest diplomatic corps in the world, and historically it has just focused on the operational engagement of what it means to host the UN, 116 consulates, 193 permanent missions, and about 70 um, international trade missions. And so what we originally started thinking about is how do you develop a platform to exchange best practices? There are two ways that um, I want New York City to show up to the global community. We are, from a population perspective, as large as 141 countries, if not larger. Um, but we're also not the island of Manhattan, and we have structural inequities that go out throughout our five boroughs from East New York to South Bronx. So how are we creating opportunities to exchange best practices beyond borders? And so the way that we decided to do it, and this is something that I'm hoping um, that we are going to really focus on in our city's um, GFC, is the Sustainable Development Goals. At the end of the day, um, the global community in 2015 came together around 17 goals to address um, poverty alleviation, climate change, gender equity, a number of issues around the world. And what we decided to do in New York City is take our development agenda, which is called One NYC, and we map the synergies to the sustainable development goals. From that in 2015, we launched what's called a Global Vision Urban Action, a platform, very unlike your dry cleaners, um, an opportunity for us to essentially exchange best practices, be transparent about what's working and what is not. And that has been, um, you know, I think a really important foundation because right now a lot of the power of cities, I think, come from the political realities of what is happening around the world. Um, we have national governments act actively advocating their responsibility on issues like climate change, migration, engage with, engagement with multilateral institutions like the UN. And so there really is this incredible moment for cities to collectively flex their power around these issues. Um, one example from New York City is that within 24 hours of the Trump administration pulling out of the Paris Climate Agreement, we signed an executive order committing ourselves to that. We worked with the US Conference of Mayors. Over 420 US cities are in, are directly committing themselves to the Paris Agreement. So we saw this opportunity of what it could look like for us to essentially try to use this collective power, this coalition building. And so in early 2018, we created the concept of a voluntary la local review. Um, this is modeled on the voluntary national review that national governments submit to the UN um, during the high level political forum. It sounds boring, but it's actually a really, really important tool by which states are sharing where they, at, or they, are, there, they are at in achieving the sustainable development goals. The reality is, though, for a lot of these issues, it, happen, it has to happen at the community and the city level. And so we worked with senior leadership, got the endorsement of Guterres and a number of other senior officials, and launched the voluntary local review, and we formally um, uh, submitted our first one in 2018. And part of the coalition building I want to talk about is one of my co-members of the council, the mayor of Helsinki. He and I had a conversation early 2018 when we were working on this concept of the VLR and figuring out how do we create a more formal process with the UN where the cities can show up on these um, sustainable development goals. 
He loved that idea. He became the first, uh, the second city in the world to, to, to join on and do. Uh, they submitted their VLR this last 20, uh, in 2019. But what was really important about this moment is that this is not about usurping or undermining member state power. This is not an us versus them. This is the recognition that we need to all be part of the solution. And so Finland was a perfect example because the Finnish government completely embraced the voluntary local review and actively advocated for cities around, of all sizes around Finland to join this voluntary local review. And you know, I'm, I'm talking about very specific tools, but again, this is part of this movement building that I think cities are actively taking a leadership role in right now. And so what we're hoping with the global um, RGFC on cities and urbanization is how do we engage all these different multi-stakeholders to move a very specific projects forward, including an energy challenge in, uh, in Helsinki. Thank you, Penny. I, I think the idea of movement building and bringing people to a common purpose is, is one of the underlying themes of what you said. You actually have a business, Lisa, that does that. Yeah. And so yeah. tell us, how do you do that differently in the private sector? Uh, and you are connecting private sector with the public sector, but how does that look or differ from what Penny does? So Apolitical is a global peer-to-peer -peer learning platform for people in government. We thought it was crazy in 2015 that it was easier for a public servant to find a lump in a mattress at TripAdvisor for a hotel than a lump in a policy. So we went out to solve that problem with a platform, a knowledge platform. And what we quickly found out was there's a lot of knowledge out there that's poorly done, but what people really need and my background before um, co-chairing the Agile Governance Council, could we get a show of hands since you did it with yours, I'm competitive. <laughs> show of hands of the Agile Governance people. They're all meeting right now. Okay, good, they're here. Um, uh, they're not very agile to your <laughs> question. <laughs> they're tweeting, right? That's what they're doing. Um, what, what, we, what we found out was there's a lot of knowledge, but it wasn't packaged in a way that was effective for public servants. In fact, um, sorry for any of my World Bank friends here, but one third of the World Bank's reports aren't even clicked on once by its author. So it's not a problem of knowledge. It's a problem of packaging that knowledge in a particular way. And as we asked pu public servants around the world, how do you find knowledge? They said Google. And so we thought, this is kind of crazy. Um, Google is fine, but that's not serving up. And what we learned um, along the way is that inspiration is a very important part of bringing people together and framing things from a learning perspective is quite important. So we're a B corporation used in 170 countries that are doing so. So what I thought I would do, um, and because my background is in brain and behavioral science, the GAC, the GACs before they're GFCs, the GUFs, um, I guess that's what you pronounce them, um, I was on brain and behavior. So I think a lot about how to bring brain and behavioral science to this. And what I thought I'd do, Anil, since you asked me to do this, is um, now if you know anything about the brain, you have to do things that are sticky. So I've give you a top 10 lessons we've learned in building a platform that is a public-private partnership. Ours is centered on government. Are you ready for the top 10 lessons? They're very short. Number one, listen design for what they need, not what you want them to have. It's really, really profound. Number two, always evolve, be agile and flexible since 1973, recognize people thank them, give them awards, give them a platform for what they do. Fourth, show social proofing. So show that their peers are doing the same sort of thing. It de-risks engagement for them in a major way. Five, make things intellectually interesting, yet extraordinarily practical. So build in how to do things practical. One of the things I love, number six, is do complexity, but not complexly. So break it down in, in chunks for people to learn. Um, seven is align incentives. So in our GAC, uh, GFC, GIF, um, what we talked about is our principle is if there's not something in it for you, you are not going to show up. And it's OK to align what's in it for you professionally and personally to what's in it for the world. And how do we do that? How do we really listen? The, the um, eight is be delightful and even fun. We're human beings. We want to have fun as we build platforms to work together. It's crazy, this notion of fun, like serious play. Number nine, humility. We're asked here, but there are 700 people who could be here in our place. How are we bringing those voices of other people in? And the last is around discipline. It's around making a checklist of the above 
or whatever principles and really using them. And I say this because we've learned and we're building this into our platform. And, and the most important, you have to design for what people need, what you, what, not what, they, what you want them to have. And you have to ask yourself that question every single day. Thank you. Uh, Lisa, I'm, I'm, we're going to come back to a couple of them, but I want to pick up on two, which I think are the two critical things that I would like for us as GFC members and as GFC co-chairs to remember over the next day and a half and as you go forward. Because the most important idea of the shift to a platform, at least from the World Economic Forum point of view, the way we think about it, is the fact that it is not just about the work and the network that we have, but it's also the network and the work that you have outside that is not yet part of the forum. Bring that onto the platform, connect that back to our work, bring it onto our media. We have 200 million um, uh, social connection, or if you want to call it touch points, 200 million a quarter. That is larger yeah. than most of the other entities out there. But how will you leverage that to scale things up? So what we are trying to do with the platform are the four things you already covered, which is anticipate the future, aggregate the works, which is the point that you both brought up. Third one is accelerate the impact and then amplify uh, the, the works value and importance. So you can then recycle, rinse and recycle, kind of a... I want to come to you, um, uh, Christina. You have, uh, you're co-chairing, you've already done several co-chairs, you're now co-chairing Energy uh, uh, Group, one of the GFCs on energy. Listening to, to Lisa's thoughts, Penny's thoughts, what are the best practices, what are the lessons you learned on the GFC? Now that you're co-chair, how are you gonna do it differently this year? And what would you give by way of input to the others? Yeah, thank you. So focusing on energy and having focused on energy for quite a few years, it is of course at an inflection point. We live where part of the world is an infrastructure which is either hard to change or is up for upgrades. Other parts of the world are thinking about what should we really do, how can we conceive of new systems, how do we have the courage to bring in newer technologies, and how do we think about that. So we have very different frameworks in different parts of the world. One of the biggest challenges for the future councils here is to both find a voice for data, what data matters, and then at the same time recognize there is no silver bullet. There is not one solution that fits all. There is not one idea that is so superior to all other ideas. But actually, the fundamental idea is community and discussions. To bring in stakeholders and to bring in various technology providers, policy providers. And this is where I am such a dedicated fan to World Economic Forum and thankful for having been part of this community for so long. Because there are very few places where we can have open and honest discussions, bring different perspectives, and stay together for a few hours, and then have friends for life to pick up the phone and engage. So to me, it is being courageous of asking difficult questions, being courageous to show that we don't know, and yet engage in the data, share the success stories. I can't, um, I'm so passionate about this opportunity where we bring in stories, we bring in opportunities where things have worked. And they will not be the same in every situation, but we would be fools if we couldn't learn from those stories. We are up against enormous threats, potentially existential such, maybe not directly from climate change, but with all the things that come from climate change where it's up upon us to take that opportunity and do something very, very quickly. So the council where I have a chance to participate is gonna try to really put forward best practice examples to light up stories where trials of new technologies that either we are participating in ourselves or that we know of become more public and bring them back to these forums if all of our nodes of networks and all of our communications just amplify through World Economic Forum, but also personally, I participate in the United Nations, I sit on some public boards, some private boards, and make sure that these stories become all of our stories, I think we have a really big impact opportunity this time around. 
Thank you, Christian. Let me do a show of hands on that last point that you How many of you sit on boards of other specialty foundations, networks, alliances that deals with issues around energy or health or something? Let me just see a raise of hand. Look at that. Now imagine if you connect all your networks to each other, do the forum's work, and then the impact that we can create. And that's exactly what we want to try and do. When you think about a platform, and I want to come to you saying, you, because you're an expert on system thinking, um, but I want to connect what Christina said and the others, which is when you think about a platform, the way at the World Economic Forum, the way we think about it, the way we write about it, is there are two things that come together. One is system leadership. Do you understand the system well enough and comprehensively as to what are the things that are connected, what are the things that are not connected that ought to be connected? And then you brought up the issue about do you bring all the smart people, the people who care about it, people who have the wherewithal to do something about it as a community to do something about it. So those two things are the magic that creates the platform. I want, I'll come back to the community in a minute, but I want to come to the system. Right. How do you, how would you think in practical terms, even though you're a physicist and you can make these things that none of us will understand, maybe a small percentage will understand, but how do you think simply in terms of a system that is dynamic that applies to a GFC? Right. So uh, first, uh, let me correct you by saying that I'm not a physicist, so I'm not that smart. I'm a chemical engineer, and I work on biotechnology, so uh, I make things. Uh, let me, uh, based on my expertise, probably it's best to, uh, to make an analogy on a systems leadership or systems approach to uh, what we are doing. So as you all know, a biological system is very complex. And we are talking about addressing complex problems through this council activities. So there's a good amount of analogy. So about 80 years ago, people thought that, especially biologists thought that, well, biological system is so complex. So what if we divide and conquer? So they want to deep dive into individual constituents of cell, for example, such as DNA, RNA, various proteins, lipid compounds. So if we deep dive onto those each and combine them together, now we understand everything about the cell. So that was done for 60 years, and after 60 years of hard work, and they started to scratch their heads. Hmm, do we know about the cell? No, we don't. Because we neglected largely the most important the interaction among the uh, systemic components within the system. So if we make an analogy to our council activity, obviously we have 700 great minds with different expertise, but if they are not weaved together to make into understanding the system, it's not gonna work. So I think uh, our activity should be focused on systems leadership, and if I may continue, I read a very interesting article uh, contributed by Harvard Kennedy School a couple of months ago on the uh, system's leadership for sustainable development. I'm sure that many of you already read it too. And there the authors uh, suggest so-called the CLEAR framework for leading the uh, system's change. Here CLEAR, C for convene and commit. And I think all of us convened here already and we are committed. And L for loop, that's looking into problems or vision and then learn. So we are here to learn from each other and make things happen. And E for engaging and also energize others. So we are ready to do that. And A for act with accountability. Without accountability, it's not good. And then R, we are not perfect. So we review what we did and revise. And if I'm bold enough to suggest even better framework, I can probably add very on top of it. So the very clear framework where V stands for vision or value, and E for enthusiasm, which we have, and then R for resilience or uh, realization of what we are doing, because uh, our time is precious, and then Y for years to come, not just we're going to finish it to this year. So let me stop there. It's like, it's like being in Las Vegas. I think you already contributed. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's funny, you're an academic, which is why you corrected me that you're not a physicist. If you were like my former self, and if someone introduced me as CEO, I'd say, sure I am, and then moved on. <laughs> uh, so I'm learning the difference between academia and private sector. Um, 
let me let me come back because I think you pick up on a couple of points, which is um, clarity of the framework and making sure you're connecting. How how do we keep that in a dynamic way and bringing external inputs in? I think it's a very important point, Penny. So I'm going to come to you. You are a inside a political engine, True. right? So some of the things that you had to fix in New York, where I used to live, mm -hmm. are things and going you to- And loved it, right? And I, I, I lived. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I liked it. <laughs> it was good. I sold my apartment, though, so you can tell how much I like it now. Uh, I'm like Trump. I'm moving. Uh, but coming back to no, your- No comment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, coming back to your political statement, uh, a political point, you have a four-year window. Yeah. You have an election cycle coming. Some of your problems take longer to fix. Mm -hmm. How do you do the now with an eye to the future so that you know you're having an impact? That's one of the things we talk about, and I want to spend the last five minutes or 10 minutes talking about how do you know you're having an impact in the GFC, not only to the work for the GFC, but to the work of the forum and the work that is needed. So how do you balance that? What is short term so you can show you're having an impact with a long term outcome and impact? Yeah, and you know, we're actually wrapping up. Uh, we have two more years of uh, two four-year terms, so we're actually uh, creeping up on the end. You know, it has been, I think this is part of the reason it was really important for us, at least through the international affairs and the fact that we host this really um, robust um, international community, is that we, can, we see the impact. I mean, there are a lot of our policies. We have our former CTO um, of New York City here, um, in, actually in the city's council, you almost see the direct impact of certain policies in our community, right? Whether it was um, paid parental leave, whether it's been affordable housing, there have been a number of policies that we've been able to see the impact on our citizens' lives. Now, there's issues like climate change, and this is where our one NYC development agenda that we launched in 2015, it's a 20-year agenda, right? And so we're building towards it. There is only so much that we can do and put in place. Again, you know, we don't know in the next election cycle who's gonna come into power, but we have done as much from a foundation perspective as we could. Now, from my perspective as International Affairs and New York City's ambassador to the global community, it is about creating that conversation flow and that ideas exchange, because that's something that is directly influencing our short term, short term as well as our long term. And the relationships that are being built, it's not between myself and the mayor and the mayor of Helsinki, but it's more at the staff level, and these are the people, these are the bureaucrats that stay and create and implement policy for decades, right? And so now there are people throughout transportation, sanitation, NYPD that are connected to their counterparts around the world, no matter the size of the city or town or the region. And I think it's that kind of systems leadership um, and, and relationships that are going to impact the long term. Very good. I'm going to give you, go ahead, Lisa. Can I talk about impact? Yeah. So three examples and how it relates to what we're doing. So um, at Apolitical, what we found is for example, when people felt connected to one another, a city council in Australia decided to adopt an opening policy to refugees because they were networked in a community of other cities that were doing this. This is simple, making these connections, but doing it well can be difficult. Second is Poland has gone through a massive reform in transparency with the procurement off the back of some um, corruption charges. And now seven other countries are talking about adapting that. And the last, which is related to our, our, our um, GFC, um, we put out a top 100 people in, in different topics. So this recognition piece is quite, quite important. I know for Penny and I, being named YGLs, which is a very humbling experience, has been a life, life changer and a career changer. So that recognition. We had a top 100 people in gender policy list and we had a meeting with them um, at a big, a big meeting earlier this year. And one of the women took me aside and whispered in my ear and said, because you put me on this list, I had the credibility to push forward my gender reforms. Mm -hmm. So, and that's real stuff. That's real and it basically cost us nothing. So our council is gonna be doing agile awards. How do we sort of lift the best practices and showcase what's working to de-risk and create that space for people so that they can go, I can do this too. And we're also building really concrete collaborations, not just writing papers, not you know, making more reports, but how do, how do you get 10, 15, 20 countries on a regular basis sharing what's working and what's not working? And that's what we could do together here. That's real impact in people's lives. And just last, 
I think we have to be so, back to the network theory, so careful about the power of the orthogonal community, meaning the people who aren't in this room that drive the change. And for us at the Agile Council is, we are serving, I love bureaucrats, and they serve the people. How are we making sure we're getting real-time information from the people who aren't experts, from the people who have real life experiences in New York City and around the world? Thank you. In the last few minutes, Christina, do you want to add anything? Yeah, I think it's also important to recognize that in spite of all the geopolitical tension, there is more collaboration around some of these key areas than I've seen in my career in my space. Um, there are entrepreneurs in the United States and China that work together every day. There's capital flowing in both directions more than we've seen for many years. There are opportunities to serve on advisory councils and provide input into policy through transparent networks that haven't been available even five years ago, where if we want to get engaged, we can get engaged. The barriers to entry for that has been lowered, and we must take this opportunity. It is upon us. We are grateful to be here and bring it back home. But personally lead with that change and take that upon ourselves. I think it's critical. Thank you. Sangyuk, you have so, the... Uh, <clears throat> so uh, let, me, let me start with the, uh, one of the mottos I just uh, came across. That is, uh, if you visit the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution in San Francisco office, they have t-shirts saying that we are the do tanks, not think tanks. And uh, they promised to send me the t-shirt and they haven't yet. <laughs> so uh, so this, is, uh, this is a sort of official claim for that. That, I that's think so, called, yeah. That's yeah. All, all of us will get one. Yeah. But um, so we are here. I mean, time is probably the most precious thing for all of us sitting in this room. So we want to achieve something out of this two-day brainstorming followed by uh, year-round work. And uh, let me give you very one specific good example, I think. When I was a chair of the uh, Global Agenda Council on Emerging Technologies, we talked about just beautiful amount of uh, these crazy you know, emerging technologies. And then at the end of the day, we thought that, what are we talking about all this? And then we concluded that we might want to uh, make the public and the leaders and regulators, all of them become more familiar with all these emerging technologies. And then we decided to uh, select the top 10 emerging technologies of the year. And then uh, Lee Howell supported that idea. So I'm trying to emphasize uh, not only Lee Howell's great vision, but also all the team effort by WEF, who has the platform to make this happen. So we suggested it worked it out. Now it's what, eighth edition we published this year, I think. And uh, it, the list became so much awaited list every year by the uh, Ministry of Science and Technology man, in many countries. And also now it's taken over together with the Scientific American to deliver these uh, important knowledge on emerging technologies to the uh, broader context of public as well. So this kind of deliverables we made, starting from the small thing, now became a big thing. I think uh, all the councils here, through the cross-council cross activities and all, you can make something important. And Neil, can I, can I run a quick experiment? What, two seconds? All right. Okay, so if you know anything about behavioral science, there's this um, a commitment principle. So if you make a public commitment, you are more likely, this is very public, you're more likely to stick to it. So I'm gonna ask you to make a public commitment, and this goes to your shirts, Lee. So you have to raise your right hand. You kinda have to trust me. I commit to. I commit, I commit to. to. There are not a lot of hands up. That's it. You can trust me, yeah? the famous last words. I commit to. I commit, I commit to. to. Do, do, do. And think. And think. You see it? Look around, everyone. No, you have to do it. <laughs> now, I thought I was going to summarize, <laughs> but I, I, I'm not quite sure what to say now. <laughs> They're committed. Maybe just do, do and say thank you to all of you. But let me, let me try and summarize at least five points for all of us uh, to think about for the next two days, but also going forward. I, when I was a professor, I used to say that just because you started talking doesn't mean they've started listening. <laughs> and just because you have stopped talking doesn't mean they have stopped thinking. <laughs> We are going to stop talking soon, hopefully, but hopefully they haven't stopped thinking about the ideas that we put here. But I just want to think about these ideas, for, or put these ideas out for you to think more, to discuss more, and to work with. First one, to just pick up some of the themes, it's about a movement building, 
Movement building is about letting the people own the movement, and that is what we are trying to do with our communities. You own it, because I keep saying where they come back and say, the forum should do this, the forum should do that. No, we do that. You are the forum, you are the communities, that's why you're here. So that's the first one, that we own the collective future. But we also need to package it in ways that is easy for people to understand so they can do something about it, which was the second point. Third one is connect our work, your work, to your networks, make it to your day job, and bring your day job and your day passions onto the GFC and to the work. So own some piece of your GFC that you say, I'm going to lead, then some piece of your GFC that you're going to help shape because you want to engage in it, and some piece that may not be where you can add, but you're gonna monitor so you can see when you can jump in. So that's the, the last thing. And the final thing I'm gonna say is about the system. On one hand, you can talk about multipolar and multiconceptual, but the way to think about it is, in a positive way, a multiconceptual is what we call interdisciplinary. If you can bring multiple disciplines, multiple thinking, multiple perspectives, and let them connect the dots, interchange the ideas, you could probably get to a place where you can make progress towards improving the state of the world and solving for many of the challenges we have. So with that, I want to say thank you to my great panelists. Thank you to all of you for your work, for your contributions to the World Economic Forum's effort. And I want to ask you to stay engaged and to drive us and to push us, to challenge us, and make sure that you own what we are trying to do. Thank you.